can engage our community and make our local city run much more efficiently. And out of that came some project, uh, a project leader by the name of Lily Liu. Liu. And uh, it's my understanding that Bloomberg allowed her to leave and actually start a company to be able to provide that technology to any local city municipality. So public stuff is all about providing off-the-shelf tools that are available for a very low cost to local city governments that allow a local city government to communicate with itself very efficiently. So public works to police, to communications, and to everything else, but also with the community. One of the things that I find very uh, attractive about this company that provides technology is that they have seen the problem that you know, within technology you have the concept of you know, information daily, right? There's, there's so many different avenues, and having to go to this website, having to go to that website, it's, it's problematic within a community. Uh, and you really just want to be able to, to go to one place, right? It's, there's a, a, a term that's been coined, it's, it's not information overload, it's filter failure on the part of technology. So they're trying to solve that. One of the things they've done to do that is created a pluggable interface that basically allows different neighborhood associations. If you think about, okay, there are four districts. Within District 3, there's three major neighborhood associations. Within one of those neighborhood associations, there's five districts. Within that five, within one of those districts, there's eight different major streets. One of the things public stuff allows for is the ability to create that entire hierarchy within that single system, which will allow for all those different communities to funnel all of that information up through one single web and mobile presence. It offers reverse 311 capabilities for distribution of emergency information. Um, it allows for websites. So let's say that Brookhaven Fields you know, has a website and they want to present those conversations, those types of activities that are happening with the neighborhood association concerns within that pluggable interface that goes up to that one application which would allow for everyone in the city to be able to have one place that they go to for anything and everything that has to do with the city. So you know, being able to push information out to all those cities and, and, and all, those, all those residents of the, the city. Now, when it comes to cost, uh, they obviously do what c -Click Fix does, right? They, they offer the ability to say, hey, you know, this person, they've got a tarp on their, you know, their house for the last year, or you know, we have these problems, and that's, that's actually the most minimal use case that they provide. And that's what C-Click Fix really provides. Um, they are about twice the cost of C-Click Fix, right? So they're, they're more expensive. What's twice the cost of C-Click Fix? Uh, public stuff. It's twice the cost of C-Click Fix. Correct. However, public stuff is uh, it's also a newer company. It's actually more well-funded as well. Uh, the same company who uh, invested in Pinterest is also invested in public stuff, which is a very successful social-based uh, interaction. Um, however, after conversations with public stuff, they are extremely excited about being able to launch a service for a new city startup. That is one thing they have not done as of yet as a company. They've won in cities as small as 10,000 people up to 2 million people like Philadelphia. So having a new city though is very attractive to them from a marketing perspective. And they have uh, agreed to be able to lower their annual price down to exactly what Click Fix would be able to provide. Um, but in addition to that, the first six months would be provided for free. So to be able to have all this capability, all this functionality, integration with ESRI, right, for geospatial um, information, to be able to have a strong public works integration within the city government, potentially precluding the purchase of something like CityWorks, right, which is an entire information system in and of itself, to be able to code all that for $1,800 first year and $3,600 for each one of the year. So it does everything that C-Click Fix does plus all of those does. Exactly. Okay. For, you know, the first year less price and ongoing the same price. And, and how does that interface, is that a separate function or is that part of our website and, and plug into the, into the, the It was plugged website. into the communications framework that's already being built. Correct. Where can we go to see this? Uh, what city can we go to? Uh, I, there's a list of cities. I've already talked to Gary a year ago and uh, connected him with the sales leadership from public stuff so they can start trading information so Gary can start doing. Let I me, mean, what, what, is there a city, does, does it say on the city website if it's a part of the city website, this is a public stuff icon or is it just, you know, 
the military just Oh, no, they offer complete branding for the city, right? And they don't necessarily require their branding in the city, but they have cities that are 50,000, 60,000. Right? Can you get so back just that just much more we can go to to see that, so we can see how it actually works? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, anyone can right now, you can pull up the mobile app. They have a generic mobile app that anyone can go to right now. And you can, you, they actually, that's kind of their sales model, is, is they encourage local city residents to use the generic app to try to encourage city right. governments to adopt them. So it's freely available, and someone could be reporting those types of things right now in their app. So that's, that's totally possible. And, and that's available where? Folks, the, the mobile app, what, what's the, the Apple just, Yeah, Apple Store, Android, you know. Public stuff, yeah, I guess, on the app, so yeah, it's called public. I'm having a hard time visualizing what this is. Is this a website? Is this a... Think of it as a, a software as a service, cloud-based application, such so that anyone within the local, sorry, you want to try to say it. It's basically, it's, it's technology that we don't have to own, or operate here, so it's a lot cheaper, but it's available to everybody. To allow citizens to, to use the city, if you have a pop or code violation, or one more parts are, or what's the schedule for this, all of you in one place. But it's not like patch where people jump on and make stuff. No, no, it's not a blog or a shrimp. That's why I don't know. Yeah, it's a huge one. Bob, maybe you can tell Bob, and Bob can communicate exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It basically, and this is the thing I really liked about this company is that where C Click Fix is going vertical and saying we're just going to go higher up. Yeah, I report potholes all the time. But public stuff. County uses it now. Hello, they don't right. use that. Yeah. They are. But public stuff is about going horizontal. <laughs> so let's try to provide right in the middle of a big bar of service they offer for you to engage your city and find out what's going on and what your needs are. And, you know, maybe like you said, you know, got pothole, you got, you got seat yeah. fixed. Now you have also show <coughs> violation, you know, tarp on the house. Or, you know, maybe you like police. For example, like Simbler, right, at Town Burkhead. Simbler can say, hey, we are about to have a, a event, right, at Town Brookhaven, and, and uh, it's very easy to be able to disseminate that information out to the local streets that are around that area so we know, you know, there's going to be an event, you may have some parking problems or things like that, right? That's just an example of something that, you know, they can also be used for, you know, um, if, if there's a, a work order that's put in, they can actually go to Public Works to actually go change the light bulb, right, in a light house, right? It can be used for internal communications within the city government as well. I gotta see this. <laughs> so, so the, is there a, you're talking about the higher need. Is there a, uh, like my neighborhood or something, is, is there a uh, website out there? We, we've had that pitch. A couple times after the park, uh, you know, some individuals have tried to start that up you know, with the hierarchy where you can start at street level above to, to neighborhood wide. So that, that's one component of what they provide is, is that. Correct. Is that, and they're also building social innovation, right? Because, you know, second life put it best, and Americans have proved that we can like something on Facebook, right? <laughs> that's, when it comes, it's very hard to engage people, right? And so the easier we make it, people to engage with the local city government, then the more interaction that we're going to have with the citizens and the local city government. So with this software, it's a reporting mechanism. I guess the real challenge is how is that information received and acted on? Right. Correct? Yes. And that entire workflow that can be developed, so it's like this comes in from, from over here, and it gets routed through these approvals. That's what Gary said we to death and how to take the information to make sure it gets disseminated. Correct. So I'm, like thinking, I'm thinking of something like this, like emergency situations. Yes. Could be flooding, could be uh, a line down that's live, could be a tree down, something you know, let the information is put across. How is the process <laughs> at that point really become effective? That's a service that they have adopted within the utilities. It's called Open 311, which is a service that's used by lots of local city governments to disseminate information very quickly to all the citizens. That's another use of it. Again, <coughs> It's, it's horizontal, right? What they're trying to do is provide everything a local city government needs to operate and run as cheaply as possible. So when we're not having to do and pay for it ourselves, right? We would spend $100,000 doing the same thing, right? If we were to build and operate everything ourselves, right, they are providing it off the shelf for a very low cost. Bob, do you have any comments about this? Or I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with C-Click Fix, and uh, I think it's a great application. 
Um, and to your point, Joe, you know, I report a pothole, it gets put into a queue in the public works department you know, within a, a very short period of time. Works with GIS to say this is where the pothole is, and then it sends out updates. But if, if, and I'm aware of other applications that cities are using for emergency 311 services, getting the word out about a, a, a storm or a pipe, uh, water pipe being broken on a certain street. But I think it's a, a terrific thing and definitely deserves some exploration uh, in terms of some way to, for the city to work. But again, how is it going to tap in? Let's talk with Gary, let's talk with IT, let's talk with you, let's talk with uh, sure. Marie and, and city. Let's give us a link to where we can see it actually. Yeah. Link to their site and then link to the city that's using We can go to publicstuff.com. Okay. Right. Sounds like it would be a very, very good saving to the city. Yes. It sounds like it would be a great tool, though. Like just, I mean, C-Click Fix is so successful, people, and I know people at Bellamy love that. Um, imagine having that type of power for every, you know, there's there's kids in the park smoking meth. It's, it's, a, it's an emergency, kind of, but you can go to the website and put, you know, put it there. Or there's a there's a flood in the bathroom at uh, Brownwood Rec Center. You know, that's the kind of thing you can use. So not only is it that, yes, that community reporting it, but then all the automation to connect it to the oh, right people to solve the problem. To the right people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So without having, it's, instead of having to have separate systems that we have to integrate together, instead it's all pre-integrated. It all works. You know, it's kind of out of the box is eight million. Right. Right. One, one of our citizens, you know, this week, uh, Bill and Chris Carroll, here about uh, reverse 911 yeah. and sort of in light of the school shooting, uh, would this system apply to that sort of pushing out emergency information out to the citizens? Yeah, it's that open 311 system. It's disseminating information to the citizens. Yeah. Yeah. Taking information and it's in there. Oh, that's good. Well, sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job. Sounds like we could be on the leading edge or something. Yeah, I mean, these guys, they are coming on strong, right? And, and you know, two years ago, they really weren't, right? I mean, I can see why a lot of other cities haven't used them, right? Yeah, because they, they're fairly new, but the success they've had in the last two years is just monster. And it's really, it's cutting edge technology that's you know, very cheap and providing a lot of good stuff. Well, we thank you for coming here on a Saturday. We know, you know, Aaron's wife is expecting any day now. How's it doing? It's getting tough. <laughs> 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 yeah. These are the sleepless nights you start. So. Okay. You know, they sleep this night's must. Just a treat. Thank you. 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 Thank you.